Okay, let's get more insight into the financial impact of this conflict. We're going to bring in Klaus Laris. He is a professor of history and international affairs at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Klaus, uh, welcome back to the show. We certainly appreciate you taking time. Hello, how are you? Good, good. So much human suffering going on in Ukraine. When this conflict is simply going to have a devastating effect on food supplies. Ukraine has long been seen as the breadbasket of Europe. Three plus weeks of fighting. What are your concerns right now moving forward about the uh, global food supply chain and, of course, getting food to those people in dire need in Ukraine? Indeed, both Russia and Ukraine are the wheat and grain basket of the world. You can say almost 50 countries get 30 percent of their grain and wheat from Russia and Ukraine. And Russia can't deliver because of the various sanctions on, uh, on, uh, on Russia. And Ukraine is, of course, in a very uh, difficult situation because of the war, in, uh, war situation and the invasion of Russia of Ukraine. So both countries are almost excluded from delivering wheat and grain and other agricultural uh, products to the world. And that will have devastating um, impact on the rest of the world, particularly, of course, on poorer countries. Already Egypt, Indonesia, Bangladesh, some other countries are restricting the export of their own agricultural products and are desperate to find alternative suppliers. But that is very difficult indeed. Yeah, we're going to see clearly more of that. Well, Russia's economy also in at free fall. Uh, question which nation, if any, will come to the aid of Russia. So the central bank, as we just mentioned, keeping interest rates at 20 percent, at the same time says it is preparing for, quote, large scale structural transformation. That sounds ominous. What do you take away from that? Yes, we expect that the Russian economy, the Russian GDP, will fall by 10 percent or even more in 2022, which is an awful lot. The Russian people themselves speak of a new perestroika, a new reconstruction of their economy. And perestroika refers to the very difficult economic period towards the end of the Soviet Union and the beginning of uh, the Putin era in Russia. And to go back to that very catastrophic situation is, of course, very daunting. There are other countries countries who could help out uh, Russia, but there, that is very difficult because of the international sanctions which have uh, put, been put on Russia. China could help out, but China is very careful to do so because it doesn't want to be sanctions itself. Also, can they, could that even be done very quickly? Your reporter talked about the uh, destruction and uh, interruption of supply uh, chains. And that so, uh, you know, uh, the Russian economy cannot be propped up very quickly, even if other countries want to do that. Um, and Russia and Putin has a severe problem at his hands. And even Putin has recognized that and has talked about deep structural changes. And that means that in the end, perhaps the protest movement within Russia against what Putin is doing in Ukraine will increase and will perhaps uh, develop into a real protest movement. We don't know for sure, of right. course, but there will be a deep economic impact on Russia and the, the Russian people. Yeah, clearly the, the people in Russia, their reaction to this is something everyone's monitoring. And you mentioned that Russia could lose 10 percent of its GDP. Analysts say the conflict will trim about 1 percent off the global GDP. That's according to the IMF. What does that mean and what, what is that going to do to the global economy at a time when so many nations, including the U.S., are concerned about rapid inflation? Yes, indeed. Uh, inflation is everywhere increasing all over the world. But also, of course, we are in the, still in the pandemic in some countries or in the immediate post-pandemic period in many other countries. And that means uh, the economy is still under strain and uh, the economy is only growing very, very slowly in many countries. So another loss of 1 percent of GDP or even more, perhaps, mm. that will be devastating. Also, international inflation is expected to rise between 2 and 3 percent percent because of the war in Ukraine. And that is also daunting because, of course, inflation rates in many countries, including in the United States, are very high indeed. And that is uh, worrying to the consumer. In Europe itself, uh, people expect, experts expect that perhaps GDP will decline by 1.5 percent because of the war in Ukraine. Of course, we don't know for sure, and it all depends on how long that war is going to continue. If the uh, war could be stopped next week, which we all hope for, then, of course, the GDP impact will be much less than when it goes on for another few weeks or uh, even months, which we, of course, don't hope that that will be the case. So it really depends on the, uh, on the war itself and how quickly that devastating conflict can be stopped. 
Klaus, we don't have a lot of time. It's a little unfair to ask you this question, but two million refugees, half of which are in Poland, Ukraine's neighbors are bending over backward to help out in this mission of refugees flowing into these nations. But how much can they take? When are they going to reach a breaking point? Yes, that is a big question. Poland has taken in very uh, many refugees. Most of uh, the refugees have gone to Poland, but also to other countries like uh, Moldova, for example, a very poor country in Europe, Hungary, and they are flowing onwards into Western Europe as well. Mm. Uh, People have also arrived in uh, Germany already. The difference to previous refugee flows is perhaps that the Ukrainians who are coming to Poland and other countries are hoping to return. Right. And they, uh, uh, I think, have a justified uh, expectation that uh, after the end of the war, they can and will return. And that is, of course, a relief to countries such as Poland, that these are temporary refugees rather than permanent ones. And it is also the big if, but and we'll keep monitoring that as well. Klaus, thank you very much for your time. We certainly appreciate your insight.